As always, we're back. My brother's commentary, back in action. You know what? I'm going to grab my drink so that I don't choke uh, <laughs> while we're doing this. Uh, but we're ready to rock and roll. Uh, we're going to do our second part of a maybe two, maybe three part series. Yeah, we haven't decided yet. <laughs> <laughs> on how things go. We're just going to kind of play it by yeah. ear tonight. Yeah. Uh, depending upon how the conversation goes. But just to kind of remind everybody, we're talking about immigration, illegal, legal immigration, yeah. hot button topic, the border wall, the humanitarian crisis at the border. Um, kind of, you know, pick your plug, you know, plug in your word, uh, buzzword. But that's what we're here to discuss. Matt's got some really cool ideas on kind of improving upon our system and, and making it. Um, you know, just a little bit more well-rounded for everybody. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of the goal. So with that, I think where we left off, Matt, was right before we started talking about the military program. Yeah. Um, so with that, let's dive into part two of our two- to three-part series um, and pick up on, on kind of the military involvement here. Yeah, so yeah, the military you actually established that was a recruiting program. I think it was back in 2011 or 2012. It might actually be before that. Okay. But anyway, I mean, the program that they called, that they that they established to try to recruit, like, qualified individuals who were green cards, yeah. was uh, was the MAPNI program, or the Military Accession Accessions Vital to National Interest. Okay. That's what the acronym stands for. So yeah. essentially, it's this program that allows that tried to allow the military to recruit people who were not U.S. citizens in 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 the military. But in exchange for citizenship? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's, uh, so that's a critical, yes. that's the reason. Yeah. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I mean, the I mean, I think we discussed this uh, in our military video, but yeah. the military is going to have a massive recruiting shortage over the next couple of years, if not decades. Yeah. If, I mean, and to be honest, they're actually probably going for it right now. So, for me, I think it makes sense to try to... Hmm. Offer out that olive branch, yeah. so to speak, to somebody who's trying to come here yeah. and trying to do it in a in the proper way, a yeah. legal immigrant, mm -hmm. um, if they want to serve the country. Yeah. That they're, that they're going to become a part of. And, and, in, return, and, and in return... For citizenship. Yeah. Um, which is uh, fair. I mean, under the under the old NAPNI program, unfortunately, uh, I mean, well, actually, I, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but <sighs> the MO, I mean, the the jobs that were open mm -hmm. to the applicants were only jobs that did not require a security clearance. Okay. Which, to be fair, I think is the right call. I don't think we should have anyone who's not a U.S. citizen in those types of roles. Right. But I, but to me, it doesn't make any sense why the military closed this program down. So the MAPNI no longer exists. It no longer exists. They closed it down in 2016, and all the applicants mm -hmm. <laughs> that were selected to join the, the military via this program, yeah, were actually, uh, are actually, are probably looking at being deported. I think so, some of them were. So I, let me not ask, all of them, but at least some of them were. So let me ask you this: 2016, was it? Obama or Trump who shut it down? It had to be Obama because Trump didn't come in office until the... Yes, it was Obama that shut it down. Okay. And I think the problem was <laughs> the background checks were not really effective, unfortunately. I think that's why they shut it down. Okay. So I do think we should have improved background checks. I think... We're just an improved vetting process. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so I think... Uh, uh, well, let's talk about... Yeah. You've, got an, you've got kind of a proposal here on... This legionnaires. Um, yeah, deal. that's what I'm calling the. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm calling the the members who joined the military via the MAPNI program. Okay, so you're talking about reinstating the MAPNI program. Because here's yes, okay. I am talking about reinstating it not just for the army, yeah, but for the entire military. Okay. Because uh, unless I'm mistaken, I think it was just an army program, uh, not necessarily navy or marines or air force or even the coast guard. Okay. I think 
Actually, you know what? I don't think I had the Coast Guard in this one, so. <laughs> That's okay. I uh, see you do yeah. have it listed down here under some of the requirements. Oh, I do. Yeah. So. Oh, I did. Yep. I yeah. did. Yep. I, so, yep. I did. Again, and why, the reason Matt's saying this, I don't think he had it listed, yada, 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 is because you are constantly updating and amending yeah. these things. Yeah, this I is, have like constantly like, These are research. very fluid, which is why we always talk about audience participation and feedback because mm -hmm. neither of us claim to have all the answers or know everything. Yeah. These are evolving things that we're trying to bring to the forefront to offer solutions rather than yeah. just criticize people for having difference of, of opinion mm -hmm. or, or thinking, oh, it's this is bad or this is bad or whatever. Um, we're trying to offer something. So, yeah. so let's talk about what what would this program look like reinstated now with some of the you know eligibility things, requirements, yeah. some of the different vetting yeah. processes that we're talking yeah. about. So essentially, in order to join the program, you basically have to be around 17 to 39 years old. Okay. You have to have no more than two dependents. You have to pass the ASVAB test, just like U.S. citizens do. Yep. Uh, you have to pass at least one psychological slash personality test and one motivational interview. And you also have to submit your social media, email, and phone call histories from at least five years prior to the start of, of the application. Are those new requirements or are those... No, these are new requirements. Okay, these are, these yeah. are new proposed yeah. requirements. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a critical yes. point of clarification. Yes. And I would say probably the big thing is you also have to pass an Interpol background check. And I don't, I don't, to be honest, I couldn't find whether or not that was actually part of the... Original? Or, yeah, I don't, I don't think that was. Okay. But the reason why I added it is because that's how the French Foreign Legion tries to vet their recruits okay so taking a page out of their playbook yeah actually. exactly because yeah. the french foreign legion recruits foreigners to join the special unit <laughs> yeah. so i figured why can't we do that yeah like if the french can do it why can't we <laughs> yeah so and i think another thing that i personally <laughs> that i personally wanted to point out is that anyone who actually manages to be selected from the MAVNI program yeah. is exempted from all, is exempted from the visa and asylum limits. Okay. So they're not included in that number yeah. when they hard cap it. Yeah. Okay. So if you're trying to go for the point system and, but you decide you want to try to go through uh, the MAVNI program, yeah. then and you are and you're accepted into it <laughs> yeah then your your acceptance doesn't affect those yeah. that are in line under the point system yes yeah the other applications right so essentially uh for asylees refugees green card holders and uh non-immigrant visas i mean you basically have to serve for at least four years and if you're an illegal immigrant... Already living here? Yes, already yeah. living here, who doesn't have any sort of violent history or anything like that, just someone, I mean... Seeking a better life. Yeah, just trying to seek a better life. So you have to serve at least six years. Yep. Fair. Now, for citizenship, you have to serve at least three years for the first category, or <coughs> five years for illegal immigrants. <coughs> So they would become citizens and then serve one remaining year as a citizen? Yes. Okay. Unless they wanted to reenlist. <laughs> then they can... And, and at, at that point, and maybe you're getting to that, but let's say they let's say they achieve their citizenship, serve out their four- or six-year you know, commitment, yeah. and want to reenlist, would they then be eligible for positions that require a security clearance? Yes. Okay. Yes. They would absolutely be. Okay. So there is a path to moving yes. through the ranks as you essentially, yes. you know. Yes. Um, and all members of the Mandy program are are given the same pay and same benefits as regular military service okay. members. Okay. Yeah. This, to me, it doesn't really seem fair. Well, to, it wouldn't be fair. <laughs> They're doing the same work. Yeah. Or hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I guess I want to ask, you know, as far as, as far as, what's going on currently. Yeah. Um, you know, the MAVNI has not been in place for some time now. Yeah. 
have do we have any pulse on the Trump administration's stance on this program, or has he commented on anything to this effect during his tenure? I don't know the answer to that question. To be honest, I mean, I've tried to find out. Yeah. And, I, and by all means, correct me if I'm wrong, viewers, but I don't think he's supportive of it. Okay. That'd be I mean, interesting. I could be wrong. Yeah. I could be wrong. I'll be That'd be interesting to find out. So if yeah. somebody can provide a link or something in the comments section below, yeah. let us know. Uh, we'd be curious, and we'll keep doing some digging yeah. on our end yeah. and maybe can add a link as well mm -hmm. if we figure out yeah. you know, whether or not uh, yeah. what the Trump administration's stance is yeah. on, on a program like this. Yeah. I think it's important to kind of talk about, you know, why, why this is potentially a good idea. Yeah. You know, obviously we have a situation where – People want to come into this country. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've talked about it in other podcasts, other shows, that there seems to be this increasing polarity. And anytime you have polarity on a topic like immigration, you've got all the people on one side saying, yeah. build the wall, kick yeah. them all out, deport them, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Then you have the other people saying, these are human lives, we need to help them, let the people in, they're doing jobs we don't want. At some point in time, we've got to figure out. Yeah. Some way to come, some, way, some to, way to meet in the middle and try to find a decent compromise that works for everyone. So to me, I, I see this as if somebody really wants a better life and they're mm -hmm. seeking out work, yeah. um, you know, this may be an opportunity for somebody to say, you know what, it's four years or six years yeah. of commitment. And at the end of that, I get to provide, you know, citizenship to my family. Um, you know, and now I can go in and pursue something else. And so I think all we're trying to do is say, okay, we have sympathy for these people. We want to try and help. We also understand that there's a line out the door for people trying to come here yeah. the right way and legally. Yeah. There has to be some middle ground that offers people who want to apply, who are good standing in their, you know, in whatever country they're coming from and can pass the background checks and aptitude tests yeah. and, you know, maybe they have an opportunity to help us yeah. out. Uh, it doesn't change the fact that we do have a need, as you pointed out, yeah. for more military members. We're going yeah. to be missing quotas in the yeah. Army over the next couple of years in terms of recruitment. Yeah. And this is an opportunity to plug in a solution mm -hmm. that we can maybe address some of its, some of its maybe shortcomings from the first time around yeah. on the vetting side of things mm -hmm. and also address a major issue, which yeah. is immigration and illegal immigration. Yeah. And, you know... So, who knows? Yeah. Um, so, kind of moving on. Absolutely. Sorry, we got off a little Yeah, tangent. we did get a little <laughs> off track. That's okay, though. Uh, yeah. So, moving on. I think another program that has been talked about uh, that I think is really good is establishing a new agency called the United States Border Patrol Auxiliary. So, basically, for those, for those viewers who are familiar with the Civil Air Patrol, that's essentially what we're trying to create here, but the Border Patrol equivalent of it. So, essentially the responsibilities of members would be transportation of illegal immigrants, booking and processing, hospital watch, uh, electronic video and sensor monitoring, radio dispatch, vehicle and wall fence maintenance, managing donations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So essentially, what I want to do is for, I want, to ha I want to allow people who are on both the northern and southern borders to help supplement the Border Patrol by taking over some of the, some of the things that, <laughs> that shift Border Patrol resources away from actually patrolling the border and trying to catch and detain illegal immigrants. Okay. So... So if we can have citizens that are at least 12 years old onward to actually kind of help with some of this stuff, I think we can do that. <coughs> do you think it's fair for a 12-year-old to be out there? I don't necessarily think they're going to be out there patrolling on the border, per se, but more okay. like just doing some of the background stuff. Okay. Would they be getting compensated, or is that a volunteer? No, this is a volunteer thing. I mean, okay. So essentially, they'd actually be paying money to actually participate in this. Okay. But I think we should also allow <laughs> citizens throughout the United States to actually donate 
to this new agency to actually kind of help with that as well. Yep. Hmm. And to be honest, I, I probably should have added more, more notes. Well, that's okay. <laughs> we can update them and add them. On well, the I mean, to be honest, I mean, the small notes that we have here are just the summary. <laughs> <laughs> just the summary. The notes that we have on the website <laughs> are more detailed. Oh, God. It's like at least, I think it's like almost 50 pages long, if not more. Have fun reading that. Yeah. <laughs> I think, to be honest, I think the work cited alone is worth, it's like 10. <laughs> so, hey, at least that tells you that we're sourcing yeah. our research. <laughs> or trying to, at the very least. Right. It's easier said than done. Yeah. So, oh, that's really funny. Yeah. Well, Matt, where are we at? Do we want to wrap that up as part two? Do we want to plow on into some different topics? Um, mm, you know, we're probably you know at think, about... Yeah, you know what? I think we can try to... Yeah, you know what? I think we're good. We're good? Yeah, I think... Good luck. No, I, and I think... I've been watching the clock. I think we're at about 20 minutes on part yeah. two. So yeah. I think that's a good length for us. Yep. Um, and as Matt said, next time around, we'll round out part three of the illegal and legal immigration slash border wall slash yeah. Mavni slash yeah. U.S. Border Patrol Auxiliary yeah. conversation. Yeah. Uh, so... We're out. Night Brothers Commentary, part two wrapped up. All right. See you.